So time and again, the world is confronted uh, with these challenges where it's challenged to come together to combat terror. But what exactly is being done about it? Uh, we will examine that uh, with Alok Bansal. Uh, he is uh, a well-known strategic expert from the India Foundation, a director there. Uh, welcome, Alok. Uh, but let's just first talk about how could this happen when just four days back, Saleh Abdul Saleh is uh, captured and it's uh, treated as a major success uh, of an operation that had been going on. Uh, it was a breakthrough and he was making some revelations as well. Why could this attack in the first place not be prevented? See, firstly, let me clarify. As of now, just now, the news has appeared on Egyptian media, hmm. which says that ISIS has actually claimed yes. credit for these attacks. Yes, so, uh, these are unverified reports. We so did see are, that. Yeah, and we I think it, it seems to be ISIS attack. In fact, all indicators point to it. Hmm. But this attack depicts three things. Firstly, that there are a large number of sleeper cells operating in various countries of the world, hmm. which can be activated at a very, very short notice because Salem was captured just four days back and within four days they have struck. And in fact, uh, it also tells that it is not a good strategy for the government agencies to be talking on media saying that he's cooperating, he's giving this information. Probably this could have uh, activated them to act faster. Mm -hmm. And the final issue which we need to understand is that this is a difficult war. This is a battle of ideology because ISIS sells a narrative to the youth. And I think the youth who are actually uh, converted to their point of view are actually looking for something beyond life. And mm. it is for them to counter them, we need to come out with a comprehensive de-radicalization strategy. There are no shortcuts as far as dealing with this sort of an outfit is concerned. The solution to this is not bombs or bullets. It requires a carefully crafted de-radicalization strategy to target their brains. Yes, we've been uh, hearing a lot of world leaders talk about this uh, de-radicalization strategy. We've uh, heard our Prime Minister, we've heard uh, David Cameron talk about it as well. Uh, uh, they are uh, talking about extensively changing, uh, changing schooling in the UK as well. But when is are we going to see concerted action on this? I think a time has come when the global community needs to come together. But we in India had the World Sufi Conference, yes. which was actually a very, very significant step towards this. Because please understand, they have a narrative. You mm -hmm. need to present a counter narrative. And I think the Sufi Conference was the first step towards pre preparing a counter narrative. It's just not the schooling pattern. Okay. It's actually the curriculum, the mm. media, which are going to be very, very powerful tools of this de-radicalization strategy. You, because the youth which has been converted has to be told that what they have been taught is wrong. You have to give them an alternative viewpoint. And mm. I think this requires collaboration. And I think uh, in Sufi conference, we saw a large number of people come, including Tahirul Qadri, etc., mm -hmm. who has actually created an nar alternative narrative, who's right. been doing it. We, I think, made uh, take some part of his narrative, which is actually a very comprehensive narrative mm. where he quotes from Holy Quran and Hadith to counter the narrative that's been put forward by And in IS. the context of Europe, and perhaps even in a wider context, there's also this talk of uh, you know, countering this feeling of alienation that some of these uh, communities have, uh, out of which uh, these perpetrators of uh, terror are emerging. Uh, how do you do that? See, again, uh, I personally feel this, is, uh, uh, this narrative actually sidetracks from the main issue. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people have been saying, a lot of analysts in India say that this is because of economic deprivation, a sense of alienation. But if you look at it, the people who have been involved in various attacks, mm. uh, none of them were actually suffering severe economic deprivation. In fact, uh, okay. uh, the people from India who went to join ISS, they were actually from the mainstream. They were actually from the better off sections of the society. Educated so, as well. Educated as well. Uh, in fact, the first Indian to die fighting for ISIS was actually a la uh, real estate uh, magnate's uh, son and had mm. done BTEC and MTEC from UK. So uh, I think uh, this concept of alienation, deprivation, I think it's actually a flawed narrative. People have really not read the IS narrative, which mm. IS churns out uh, both on cyber world and through uh, their various propaganda medium which actually has a very, very strong theological underpinning. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand the theological underpinning and then come out with a counter narrative uh, just to simplify this issue by saying that they are deprived, deprived or they are alienated is, I think, okay. not a solution. Okay. Well, I hope there is action on this front uh, as quickly as possible because uh, day in and day out, we're seeing such incidents take place where innocents are uh, 
murdered, brutally murdered. Uh, uh, scenes of mayhem are recreated in different corners of the world. And uh, there is an urgent need to counter this. Uh, we can hope that Prime Minister Modi will raise this issue again very strongly when he's there in Brussels. He's also going to Washington for that matter. And uh, although the agenda is uh, quite different, I'm sure this will figure there as well. Thanks a lot for joining us for the time.